Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. Now I'm not gonna waste your time making two separate videos. These phones are basically the same, except one has a bigger display and a bigger battery. Performance wise, they're identical. So everything that I don't like about this one, I don't like about this one. And everything that I like about this one, I like about this one. All right, so first things first, let me answer the main three questions that everybody been asking me all week. Number one, if you got an iPhone 10, should you upgrade and get the iPhone 10s? And the answer is no. Not only no, hell no. All right, if you go to Apple and you want to trade this in, they're going to give you 500 bucks. The iPhone 10s, you're looking at a thousand bucks. So what are you getting for that $500 difference? Literally nothing. Now, I know somebody's going to say, well, you got the A11 versus the A12 chip. Y'all seen the unboxing video when I put them side by side and we opened up the websites. Performance wise, it's exactly the same. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. The only real difference you're getting is with the uh, iPhone XS. You got that portrait mode enhancement feature. Is that worth 500 bucks? No. All right. So if you got the iPhone 10, you're good to go. If you spend that 500 bucks just for the upgrade, congratulations, you played yourself. All right, your new name is Boo Boo the Fool. You just bought the same phone twice. Next, if you got an iPhone 8 Plus, should you upgrade and get the iPhone 10s Max? Now, if you're looking for better performance, the answer is no. Now, let me explain something real quick. For the process of this review, the last week, I only used four phones. The whole week, I only use the iPhone 10, the 10s, the Max, and the 8 Plus. Now I'm talking about day-to-day -day activities. We're not talking about your Geekbench or your nerdherd.com speed test. I'm talking about regular day-to-day -day activities. Wake up in the morning, take your phone off the charger, check your email, maybe check your Twitter, jump in the car, throw on your Apple Music, ride out to work. When you get to work, watch some YouTube videos, take some pictures, send a bunch of emails and text messages, play on Instagram and Facebook for a little while, get off of work, come back home, jump on the internet, do some shopping, watch some more videos. Performance wise, you will not notice the difference between all four of these phones. Don't be fooled by that A11 versus A12, supersonic, bionic, titanium, uranium chip. Don't let the name fool you. Performance wise, they all gonna feel exactly the same. So if you got an iPhone 8 Plus, I would say keep it. But there's some upgrades with the Max. Like now, instead of LCD, you get an OLED display. So that is an upgrade. You're getting better battery life. That's another upgrade. The speakers sound better. Now, you lose that fingerprint sensor, but you got face unlock. And you got a newer design. So if you had an iPhone 8, and you maybe you had an iPhone 7 before that, and an iPhone 6, you're getting tired of these horizontal cameras. You want to step up into the future with the vertical cameras. You want to be up to date. All right, fine, upgrade. But if you just upgrade and basically for performance, don't do it to yourself. Me personally, I would say upgrade just for the speakers and the display. Last question. Now, this is, the, this is probably the question I get asked the most. Should you get the Galaxy Note 9 or should you get the iPhone XS Max? Now, look, I'm going to answer this question the same way that I answer it to all of my friends, everybody that I work with, everybody in real life. As soon as they ask me that question, I ask them a question. What phone do you got now? All right, so answer that for yourself. If you got a OnePlus 6, maybe you got a Galaxy, maybe you got an HTC. If your last phone was a Galaxy S9, and then the phone before that was a Galaxy S8 and a Galaxy S7, get the iPhone XS Max. Try something different. All right, if you keep buying Android phones, you're cutting yourself out of half of the phone game. You're missing half of the fun. And that goes both ways. If your last phone was an iPhone 8, then before that you had the 7 and the 6 and the 5, you never experienced Android, try something new. All right, stop falling victim to all of that Android versus iPhone stuff. Look, man, this is 2018, try something new. So to answer that question, depending on your last phone, switch up and get something different. Now, if it was me personally, if I had to choose between one and the other, I'm going with the Galaxy Note 9 for a couple of reasons. First of all, that Bluetooth S Pen, that's the best thing since pants with pockets. Next, we got multitasking, always on display. There's a few more things that I like about the Note 9, better battery life. That makes this my personal favorite. But my job is not to tell you what phone to get. I'm just going to lay it out there and you make that choice for yourself. 
Now, before I get into everything that I don't like, y'all know that's coming. Let me address these issues. Now, I've been getting emails all week. People want me to talk about the issues. All right, so there's six issues that popped up lately. So let's go through them real quick. Number one. Now, shout out to my dude, Lou, from Unbox Therapy. He found that little uh, charging issue. Here's the thing. Whenever you're buying electronics, now it's not just phones, any kind of gadgets, even with cars, anything that has a bunch of moving parts and computer chips and all of that, there's a chance that you might get a defective one. Think about it like this. Remember when I when I had the uh, Note 8 and I was saying that my Note 8 was lagging after a while? I had a thousand people saying, no, it ain't. My Note 8 still runs brand new. Well, guess what? Maybe I just had a defective one, which that ain't the case because I had a bunch of notes and they all lag, but that's neither here nor there. So my, my answer to that question, what about the charging issue, is I never had that problem. Now, let me tell you what I do. Every day when I get to work, I put my phone, 10S Max, on a wireless charger, and it charges right up. Soon as I walk in the door at my house, I plug it in, because I got the fast charging brick, I plug it in, walk away, I go take a shower, you know, shit shower, shave, come back, unplug it, the phone is fully charged up. I've never had an issue where I plug the phone in and it hasn't started charging. Never. Now, does that mean one of us is right and one of us is wrong? No. It means that I'm not having that issue. Now, if you having that issue, it could be quality control. Maybe they had a bunch of uh, a batch of uh, iPhones made here and they all having that problem. Then iPhones made in this country or in this factory. None of them having that problems. It is what it is, man. All I'm saying is I never had any issues charging my iPhone and that goes for both of these phones. I plug it in, it starts charging. Y'all see my case videos, drop it on the charger, starts charging right up. So no issues with that. So Lou, you might got a defective phone. If that's if that issue starts popping up all over the internet, then it could be what it is, but maybe I'm lucky, I don't got that issue. Next issue, the beauty cam issue with the front facing camera. Again, now Lou found this issue too. When you take a selfie, the selfie camera is kind of making you look like a girl. Well, let me just say this. That's a white man with white man problems. I, I'm dark skin, I don't have that problem. Now on the side note, I'm just kidding. Let's all just all relax, I'm just kidding. I was watching Die Hard with a Vengeance. Y'all remember Sam Jackson said that to Bruce Willis? That, that line just fit right now, so I just said it. But that's just a little joke to break the tension of the Android Apple Wars. We all having fun, I love everybody. But all jokes aside, the front face and beauty camera, it does, add an aggressive filter to your face. Now, I'm not gonna say it makes you look like a girl, but it does it does make your face look a little bit different. Now, here's my thought on that, that uh, issue. For me, it's not an issue at all. And ladies, y'all gonna love this feature. When you take a picture using the selfie camera, it's gonna make your, your skin look flawless. All right, it's gonna make you look about 10 years younger. Now, I don't know about you, but me, I am not complaining about taking a picture and my skin looking flawless. Let me tell y'all a true story. This is a true story just happened to me the other day. Now my cousin is in town. I haven't seen her in about 10 years. So she hit me up the other night. They was at some bar. She was like, they got the bottles and all that. Come through. I had already started drinking some Malibu in my house. So I wasn't about to go nowhere. So I took a selfie of me holding a bottle of Malibu and I sent it to her. So she replied, she was like, all right, we'll catch up next time. And she was like, by the way, you some kind of vampire, or I don't know what kind of workout you're doing or what kind of beauty products you're using, but you better put me on, cuz, cuz you look like the same that, since the last time I seen you, and that was 10 years ago. She was like, you look exactly the same. Now for me, I'm not complaining about taking a picture and looking 10 years younger, or taking a picture and my skin looking flawless. Every time I say flawless, I gotta say it like that, because I'm telling you, all them wrinkles you got in your face, all them blemishes and all that, it's gonna disappear. Now if you white, or you high yellow, I on my dark skin, all my black dudes that's high yellow, then it might add a little bit of redness, your cheeks might get a little bit rosy, but if you're dark skin, you're not gonna have that problem, so I don't know if you wanna call out an issue or not, you know what I'm saying, for me, it's not a problem, it's not a problem at all. Next issue, blue tint. Now that issue with the blue tint, I'm calling fake news on that, because I know a lot of people with iPhone Maxes, nobody had that problem, I'll show you mine's right now. Let's take it over to something. Let me go to um, a page that's all white. <laughs> Let me get max brightness. I know, that, that joke That joke had me laughing all day. You don't see any blue tint on this. Now, y'all remember the, the Google Pixel 2 XL? As soon as you go like this, that shit just turned blue. This, there's no blue tint issues at all. All right, so for that issue, fake news. 
Next issue. Somebody said the iPhone is overheating. Now I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna really dive into that. I'm just calling that fake news. Because I've been using both of these phones all day, every day. This one right here, I use it from charge up to charge down. That means take it off the charger. I was literally on Instagram in my group chat. Shout out to the savages. Group chat on Instagram all day and watching videos all day until the phone died. Cool to the touch. All right, so that overheating problem, that's fake news. Next. Now, somebody said their battery is draining after two hours. I'm not even going to talk about that. That's 100% fake news. And the last issue, random resets. Now, for me, in order to call something an issue, it has to happen three times in the same week. If I get three random resets in the same week, I'm calling that a problem. Now, with my iPhone XS Max, I had two resets since day one. Now, maybe two days after the phone, I was scrolling through Instagram, and all of a sudden, the screen went black. You see that little wheel? Then it popped back up. I said, okay, cool. That's one random reset. No big deal. Then the other day, I was shooting the video for that uh, UE Mega Boom. And right when I was getting ready to play the music in the video, the phone did the same thing. Screen went black. That got that little wheel. And then it reset. Okay, cool. So that's two times. So Friday to Sunday, I only had that issue twice. Now with my iPhone XS, haven't reset once. So I'm calling that a non-issue. Every single iPhone that I've ever had has had that issue. That's more of a software glitch. That has nothing to do with the phone. All right, so now, I know, this is going to be a long video. Get your popcorn and your thought juice. Let's lock in. Just like any other phone that I review, there's always going to be some things that I don't like. So let's get into those first. Now, Apple Mafia, this is the part of the video that y'all going to want to skip because you're not going to like this. Number one, the price. Now, I said this before, and I'll say it again. Let's all say it together. The price is too goddamn high. All right, now, 1400 bucks for 256 gigs for the Max. 1100 bucks, 64 gigs for the 10s. The price is ridiculous. All right, not ridiculous, ridiculous. It's too damn high. For 500 bucks, you can get yourself a one plus six. For a thousand bucks, you can get a one plus twelve. All right, that's his and hers. One plus sixes, pound for pound, they pretty much do everything the same. But you have money left over. All right, now I understand you got to pay to play, but I don't like that price. Next, no fast charging brick included in the purchase. Now you mean to tell me I just dropped fourteen hundred bucks for the iPhone XS Max? that has fast charge capabilities and y'all not gonna throw in the fast charger, <sighs> at least give me some Vaseline because that's a rape job right there. All right, that's, that, that is completely ridiculous. I don't like that. Every other phone that I got that has fast charging comes with the fast charging brick. We even talking about $250 blue phones. They're giving you the fast charging adapter. Why do you have to spend 40, 50, 60, all the way up to 80 bucks to have that feature that's built into the phone and you just drop 1400 bucks? I'm not co-signing that, that ain't it. Next, now this is, this is, this is a theme here. 1400 bucks, you mean to tell me y'all not gonna give me the headphone dongle? That little dongle, that might cost about five bucks or 10 bucks. I understand it's dirt cheap, but I just dropped 1400 bucks and y'all not gonna throw the headphone adapter in there. I don't like that. Now I know somebody's gonna say, oh, it comes with the headphones that has the lightning adapter built in. Okay, cool story, bro. But who cares about those headphones? Nobody ain't using them cheap shits. You wanna use your neurophones, you wanna use your your um your Sennheisers, you got some audio file quality headphones that have an actual plug. You wanna plug those in, now you're gonna have to spend some more money and buy a dongle. They automatically assuming that everybody had the iPhone 10 or everybody had the iPhone 8. There's a lot of people coming from Android straight to Apple. That's just more money that you got to spend. So you bought the 10s Max, 1400 bucks. Now you got to buy a wireless charger and you got to buy a dongle. That ain't it. Let's keep it moving. Next. Now this is one. I know I'm a little bit petty on this one, but there's no SIM ejection tool. Now, normally I wouldn't even care about that, and normally I wouldn't even notice that. I don't, matter of fact, I don't even know if any iPhones ever came with them, because I never had this issue. But when I first got the 10s Max, I tried to activate it on Sprint, and they was telling me there was a problem with my SIM card. So they was like, all right, do me a favor, take out the SIM card and put it back in. You know, they're trying to troubleshoot the phone. So I'm going through the box. I'm like, hold on a second. There ain't no SIM card. There ain't no SIM ejection tool in here. I don't like that. Then I quickly Google to make sure I ain't just get got. 
So that's let me just Google see do they come with it. They don't come with the SIM ejection tool. That's here in the USA. I don't know about if you buy the, the dual SIM version overseas or whatever. But here in the USA, if you order from Apple.com, you don't get the SIM ejection tool. Now that could literally be a dollar, maybe 50 cents. Why not throw that in the box? I mean, come on, now. They, they, they just going crazy with the short with the shortcuts. They taking mass shortcuts. I don't like that. Next, no headphone jack. Now I know this is 2018. Half of the phones in the market don't have a headphone jack, but guess what? Half of them do. All right, you see Galaxy Note 9, there's a headphone jack. Why is that important? Everybody doesn't have a brand new car that has Bluetooth. Some people have classic cars, like one of my cars is a classic M5. There's no Bluetooth connection in there to play your music. When I jump in the car, I gotta use the aux cable. People got a 1977 Shelby Mustang. People got a 68 Cadillac. Those don't have no Bluetooth. You wanna play your music, you're gonna have to use a headphone jack. You're gonna need a headphone jack, or you're gonna need that dongle. You don't got the dongle, you don't got the headphone jack. I'm not feeling that. That kind of rhyme to hashtag bars. Let's keep it moving. Next, the notch. All right, y'all remember the LeBron James hairline? Let's pull that up real quick. That notch on the top. Now, don't get me wrong. The notch itself, I don't really care about it. It ain't the biggest deal in the world. But here's my thing that I don't like. Y'all remember the Huawei P20 Pro and a lot of these, even like the LG G7. They have one, then this is software. This is a so, little software issue. I don't understand why Apple doesn't just implement that. Go to settings, press one button, and the whole top turns flat black. This way you don't got the notch. A lot of people don't like the notch. They just don't like it. That's nacho cheese, I know. A lot of people don't like it. So all of my phones that have notches and I have the ability to take the notch off, I click it off. My G7 P20, just a flat bar on the top. They need to add a little software upgrade where you could just go into settings and turn it off for the people that's not down with the notch game. Let's keep it moving. Next, no always on display. Now this is a more software stuff. You at work, you got your phone in the charger like this, you got a wireless charger, it's propped up like this. Now you across the office, you following some stuff, you walking around, you wanna know what time it is, you glance over at your phone, nothing. Big giant display with nothing, you gotta actually move it. Here's your Galaxy Note 9, always on display. So now when it's propped up, now it looks kinda dark because I'm under the lights, but when it's propped up, all I gotta do is glance at my phone, I can see how much battery I got, I see the time, the date, I see I got any missed notifications. For me, that's a must-have feature. Now I know somebody's gonna say, why are you always comparing everything to the Galaxy Note 9? You gotta remember, iPhone 10s Max, 1400 bucks, Galaxy Note 9, if you get the 512, you're looking at basically 1400 bucks. Now there's only a handful of phones in the market, maybe the Mate RS, and you're not really paying for the phone, you're paying for the exclusivity -ness with that one, otherwise you get a P20 Pro for half the price. These are the two most expensive phones out, so I gotta compare them to each other. You got that 1400 bucks that you're getting ready to drop, you need to know what you're getting and what you're missing out on. So that's why there's gonna be a lot of references to the Galaxy Note 9. Let's keep it moving. So no always on display, not feeling that. Next, no fingerprint sensor. Now here's another thing with Apple. Now this is another little petty gripe. When you swipe up, you don't have ability to put in the passcode, the, uh, the, the pattern. That's the word I was looking for, the pattern. So it's only face unlock and then the actual numbers. Now if somebody's looking over your shoulder, they're gonna see your numbers. At least with the pattern, you zigzag it. Can't nobody, can't nobody really remember that. But if somebody's looking over your shoulder, they can see your little, your little pin code. And then if you go, if you catch them watching, now you got to change the pin code. You might have had that pin code for five years. Now you got to change it. At least with the pattern, you could zip it like that. And even more, fingerprint. I don't like the fact that there's no fingerprint sensor. Galaxy Note 9 fingerprint sensor and face unlock and pattern and pin. Now look, I understand it's like you gotta have either or, but you really don't. You could buy a Galaxy 9 and have both. A Galaxy 9. Note 9, S9, basically all Android phones have a fingerprint sensor and facial unlock. All right, redundancy. With your iPhone, they need to get rid of this little Apple logo in the back. I understand it's iconic, but let's get innovative, maybe on the iPhone 11. Let's get a fingerprint sensor also. All right, so this way you have options. Right, because now I know for me, when I'm trying to open my phone clandestinely, I don't want to be like this, doing all this. If I want to do it clandestine, I can just press the fingerprint sensor or 
other phones have the fingerprint sensor on the front, just like that. All right, so no fingerprint sensor, I'm not really feeling that. Next, no expandable memory. Not the biggest deal in the world, but for me and the job that I do, my daily driver has to have expandable memory because I'm swapping those micro SD cards all day long. I got big giant files saved on each one. I don't want to keep saving them t directly to the phone. I'm not trusting my files in no cloud storage. I'm old school. Got to walk around. I'll show you how to G wallet in a minute, but I walk around with a wallet that holds all my SD cards. So for me, I got to be swapping back and forth. So I need a uh, expandable memory. No expandable memory on your iPhones. If all you ever had was iPhones, you don't care because you never had that. Next, no NFC. Now, this ain't the biggest deal in the world, but if you like me and you got a bunch of headphones and a bunch of speakers, have an ability to pair your phone or your headphones to that speaker just by tapping it like that, that's a go. Not to mention, I still got the Samsung tech tiles all over my office. As Soon as I walk in the door, I just breeze my phone to the wall, tap it like that, puts my phone in all of my office mode settings. Now, if you haven't seen Samsung tech tiles, watch my video for that. Those are those, that, that video got to be like four or five years old. Those things are still relevant to this day. Now, regardless if you use those or not, just pairing Bluetooth speakers and headphones and a lot of new products nowadays, they're coming out with NFC pairing. Apple, jump on the bandwagon. Next, no split screen multitasking. Now, for me, this is one of my biggest gripes, and this is why the iPhone can never be my daily driver. Split screen multitasking. I'm talking about having two apps open at the same damn time. You see, like right now I'm on Google. Say I want to watch YouTube. If I got my Galaxy Note, I can just swipe up. I can have YouTube at the bottom, Google at the top at the same time. All right, not going like this, switching back and forth. No, at the same time. Now, the Galaxy Note 9, that takes it a step further. Not only do you have split screen multitasking, you got the pop-up windows. Watch my Note 9 review. I'm not going to do it right now, but I can have four apps open at the same time. So that's why when people ask me which phone I like better, I tell them the iPhone is my fun phone. This is my Snapchat, my Instagram, you know what I'm saying, my my uh, animojis, my iMessage video game, uh, game playing phone. But for productivity, I just, I just got tongue tied. But for productivity, I got to have the note. I can have my calendar. I can have my Gmail, I can have WhatsApp, and I can have an internet uh, website all going at the same time. And using my S Pen to click those tiny boxes without having to keep pinching and zooming and pressing buttons, no. But anyway, no split screen multitasking, that is trash. Next, now here's another one that you're really gonna hate with iPhones, no picture in picture YouTube activity. What do I mean by that? Now this one I'm gonna have to actually show you. All right, let's, let's take it over to YouTube on the Galaxy Note 9. All right, let me find a quick video, something that's uh, minimum thought activities. Let's see. I know, I was watching some thought videos just now. All right, check this out. All right, now say I'm watching one of my Street Fighter videos. Now I want to take it over to, to Gmail. I press home. Look at that. There's YouTube. Let me turn this shit down. All right, now I just went home. YouTube is still playing. Now I can take it over to something else. Let's take it over to the gram. Now, just in case I was in the middle of a, uh, hold up. <laughs> Let me go ahead and like that photo. Now say I was in the middle of doing something, like I'm saying I'm in a group chat. I could go be in my group chat. I could be scrolling through the gram, liking all these photos at the same time while I'm still watching that YouTube video. Go home, open this back up, and there's my YouTube. Now check this out. I'm gonna do the same thing with the iPhone XS Max. Let's go to YouTube. I'm rocking that same video. Now I want to take it over to Instagram. I swipe up. Bye. Let's turn it down. Hold up. Where's my YouTube? I want to go back to YouTube. I got to swipe back over. Now say I want to go back to Instagram. Let's open up Instagram. Now let's cancel out of this. Now I'm on the gram. Let's refresh because I want to see what's popping. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now I'm back on the gram. All right, here we go. We home. All right, so now I'm back on the gram. Now I want to take it over to YouTube. I'm going to like that. Take it over to YouTube. I got to scroll back over. What did I miss? What did I miss? Who? How did he win? I didn't even see that. Oh, let me take it back over to Instagram now. I can still hear it, but where's the YouTube? For me, that is one of the corniest things about iOS. They need to upgrade that. 
Now look, there is some apps you can download from the uh, from the Apple Store. There's third-party apps that you could get to make that work. This is a stock v stock review. All right, everything on this Note 9 right now is 100% stock. Everything on this phone is stock. So everything I complain about, stock v stock. All right. <laughs> anyway, so that's one of the things I really don't like. Now y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt, so there's a couple of petty gripes that I got to talk about. So let's get into those. Number one. No app draw. All right, so I, I, now this is just a little, little silly software stuff. Now I don't even got that many apps on this phone, but no app draw. Say you're one of those people that download a new app a day, or you just at work bored, you download 10 apps a day. You're gonna be going like this all day. Now look, I don't even got that many apps, but look how much scrolling you gotta do. As opposed to just pressing one button, going to the app drawer, you can sort them from A to Z, you can unsort them. Or maybe you got some clandestine apps that you don't want to be right on your front street, on your main scroll pages. Somebody said, let me make a phone call real quick, let me see your phone for a minute. Oh, let me see what apps you got. They go Tinder. You know, you got, <laughs> you got your Pornhub app right there. Like, you want to have that tucked in the app drawer. All right, so no app drawer, that's pretty petty, but I don't like that. Next. Now here's another one, now, my, me and my daughter were just talking about this last night. You can't close all your apps at one time. Now if I wanna close them, I gotta swipe up like this. I gotta keep swiping. Keep swiping like this to get rid of all my apps. Now, now, I'm, now I'm done. Compared to, let's, let's go to Galaxy Note 9. Here's Galaxy Note 9, I wanna clear all my apps. Press one button, close all. That's the end of it. Why is that important? Say you, now we'll just say Pornhub just for argument's sake. I, I, I say just for argument's sake. Say you happen to be watching Pornhub maybe Friday night. You know, it's one of those nights. Now it's Monday morning. You at work, and your boss is like, "Oh, um, I left my phone in the office. Let me make a phone call real quick." Now you, now you got to be like, "Hold on a second. Let me scroll up. Let me see what, what uh, pages I got open. I got to get rid of." You don't know what you was doing. You don't want to hand hand somebody your phone and they can just see exactly what you was doing. So before you give them the phone, you got to be like, "Hold on a second. You looking mad suspect, you looking mad guilty, you looking like a scumbag. With the Android phones, and that's any, basically almost any Android phone, when you pick it and somebody says, let me use your phone for a second, I right, hold on a second. One button, close all, here you go. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Next, widgets. Now you do got your Apple widgets finally, but here's the problem. Say I, got, say I want my favorites widget to be right on my home screen. You can't move them. All your widgets gotta be on one screen. What if I wanna have a big Gmail widget? I wanna resize the widget. Say I want that widget to be one size of a whole page. Let me show you how that looks. Now here's it, let's, let's close this YouTube video. Now here's my widget, this is a widget. That's another widget. Now say I wanna add a page, let's, let's, uh, let's add another page. Right, let's go to, uh, let's go to widgets. Say I wanna add a, uh, a calendar widget. Right, I can put this here. I can resize this. I can actually make one whole page of all just a big calendar. That's a full size widget. Now, with your Apple phones, all your widgets are this big. Now, some of them you can expand and all that, but I just don't like having them all on one section. I like to have them spread out throughout the course, uh, throughout the different pages. Petty, I know. Next. No home screen rotation. Now this, this right here, this I, I don't like this. You see now, that, now, even on my iPhone 8 Plus, let's see, let me pull this up real quick. All right, I had to find my iPhone 8 Plus. Now check this out. Here's home screen rotation. Turn the phone sideways, your home screen rotates. Put it back up like this, now it's back to normal. Now this is the iPhone 8 Plus. I don't know why they took away that feature. I'm not feeling that. And just in case you wanna know, my rotation is not locked. Here's the Galaxy Note. Home screen rotation. Now why is that important? If you like me and you got a wireless car charger, you're not gonna put your phone on the charger like this and it's gonna block your AC vents depending on what kind of car you got. Not to mention, when you jump in somebody's car and the phone is on the charger like this, they're an Uber driver. All right, if you don't wanna look like an Uber driver, you put your shit sideways like this, it just looks more sleek and it looks better. But your home screen is not gonna rotate. Now that could be a little software update, but they don't have it right now. I know that's petty, but I don't like that. Next, 
No dual Bluetooth connection. What do I mean by that? Back to the Galaxy Note 9. Say you got a Galaxy Note 9, right? You're at work, you're in your office. You got a JBL Extreme speaker. The person across the, uh, maybe in a different cubicle, they got a UE Mega Boom. Now nobody's in the office except y'all two. Y'all want to combine the speakers together and play some music. With your Galaxy Note 9, all you got to do is go to Bluetooth. You can connect two speakers, any brand, doesn't have to be the same brand, and play music at the same time. Two speakers from any manufacturer. You can't do that on the iPhone. Now, that's not just Bluetooth 5.0. That's a specific Samsung feature. I think all phones need to have that feature because I was using it the other day. It's pretty dope. All right, but you can't do that on your iPhone. And lastly, lastly, no thought protection. Now, if you don't know what thought protection is, just watch any of my Huawei videos. I cover it in great detail. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but basically what it means is you pull out your phone. You see, this is my iPhone right here. If I wanted to have another phone without Instagram, without Facebook, or a different login, I could just turn the phone off, turn it back on using my fingerprint, and have a whole new phone. That's thought protection. You don't have it on this phone. Even on the uh, Galaxy Note 9, you got secure folders and you can use your fingerprint. So that's semi-thought protection. Huawei does it the best. Even Poco, all right? Even the Poco phone got thought protection. Apple, we need some scumbag tactics built into the phone. All right, now check this out real quick. Back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video, somebody asked me, which one do I like better, the Note 9 or the iPhone 8 Plus? I just listed 18 things that I don't like about the iPhone XS Max. Out of those 18 things, 17 of them you can do on your Galaxy Note 9. That's why I'm saying pound for pound, this phone is better in my opinion. If you don't believe me, let's do a quick recap. Number one, the price. Now, I don't like the price of none of these phones, so that's equal, I don't like the price. Number two, fast charging brick included with the phone, got it on the Note, don't have it on the Max. Next, no dongle, you don't need a dongle, you got a headphone jack. Next, SIM ejection tool, doesn't come with it, comes with it with your Note 9. Next, headphone jack, no headphone jack, headphone jack. Next, that LeBron James hairline, the notch, no notch. Next, always on display, no always on display, always on display. Next, fingerprint sensor, fingerprint sensor and face unlock, no fingerprint sensor. Next, expandable memory, no expandable memory. Next, NFC, no NFC. Next, split screen multitasking, no split screen multitasking. Next, YouTube picture and picture, no YouTube picture and picture. Even the petty stuff, app drawer, no app drawer. Close all apps, can't close all apps. Widgets that you can resize and move, no widgets that you can resize and move. Home screen rotation, no home screen rotation. Dual Bluetooth, connect two speakers. Any brand speakers, no dual Bluetooth. Thought protection, secure folders, no thought protection. 18 things, only one out of only one out of those 18 things I could have put on both phones. The Note wins by 17. Now, we're not even talking about the Bluetooth S Pen. All right, we're not even talking about all of the motion gestures. We're not even talking about the pro mode, super slow motion camera. I could go on. I, I could go on. All right, so even after all of those dislikes, all of my petty gripes, my initial impression still stands. This phone is a major, 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 major go. It's definitely the best iPhone out. It's the most fun and actually my most used phone that I got right now. Entertainment-wise, I love this phone. Apple Mafia, this is the part of the video that you've been waiting for. Let's get into everything that I do like. Number one, the feel. Now, I'm not talking about the build quality, the physical feel. I'm talking about the emotional feel. You just spent 1400 bucks. How do you feel when you're rocking this phone? Let me answer it like this. You're gonna feel like a boss. Uh, you're gonna love the feeling of this phone. Now, this is one of those intangible things that people don't really talk about, but products give you a feel. It's the same way if you get a Lamborghini or Ferrari, and you're driving around, you're gonna have a different feel than if you're driving around in a Prius. Uh, you're just gonna feel more like a boss. It's the same thing with the iPhone XS Max. Everybody knows how much it costs, so that everybody knows you got a couple of dollars. This is the newest phone out. Everybody knows you kinda hip. You're gonna have a great feel. 
All right, so I love the feel when I'm walking around with this iPhone XS Max, and nine times out of 10, I'm rocking it with no case. I need y'all to see this gold color. I need y'all to know that I'm a boss. All right, next, let's talk about the look. How does it look? Look-wise, now whether you like the notch or not, you can use a black wallpaper so you don't really see it. Look-wise, the phone looks beautiful, especially this gold one, the gold trim. I actually like that better than the silver trim and even the dark trim. This gold trim is just so luxurious. It's just beautiful. It's tremendous. It's spectacular. <laughs> I know, I ran out of words. I had big words alert, I ran out. But you get my drift. This phone, it just looks beautiful. You might wanna rock this raw dog butt naked with no case, but just be careful. Now, true story, I'm up in Tony's the other day all right, I'm buying a ham and cheese on rye. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm at the counter. Somebody yelled out, Yo, that blue car getting ready to get a ticket. I was playing around on my phone. I dropped everything to run outside. And at that moment, I, I spinned around. This iPhone XS right here fell face down. No case, face down. And not only did it fall, it fell and I kicked it. So it slid. Now, shout out to them punk ass high school students that was in there that all was like, oh, everybody started clapping and shit. I was like, if y'all don't get your ass back on that cheese bus and go to school. But anyway, the point is, the phone didn't break. All right, so that goes to say it's something about the, the actual <laughs> build quality. I'm definitely feeling that. So the look of this phone is beautiful. Speaking of build quality, that's the next thing that I like, the build quality. Now, anybody that watches my channel, y'all remember up until last week, this was my favorite built phone of all times. I, iPhone 10. There's something about the glass with the uh, uh, the, the the metal. I, I was about to say aluminum, silk, metal, stainless steel, whatever you want to call it. Y'all know what I'm saying. I got a got YouTube correction officers. Y'all stay killing me. So let me try to say this right. The stainless steel trim, right? Not aluminum with the glass on the front and the glass on the back and the weight. I do you, you you can't sleep on the weight. Now there's a lot of phones that's out right now. Some of these phones, everybody want to have the lightest, the thinnest, and the lightest phone. I'm glad Apple didn't jump on that bandwagon. This phone has a nice amount of weight to it, giggity, and the Max has even more weight. All right, it's even bigger, even heavier. You still got the steel around the side. This phone, let me get a wipe down. This phone just, the build quality is just. Insert your own big word. All right, that's that. That's what that's what I got to say about the build quality. All jokes aside, it's a one. Now, if you break that back, Apple Care is gonna hurt you <laughs> to replace it. So you might want to rock a case. But me, I'm indoors most of the time, so I'm going caseless. Build quality, a one. Next, the phone is water resistant. Now, this is not the first iPhone that's been water resistant. I'm glad that they kept that trend. So now when you're outside and you're making those slow motion videos in the rain or you're at the beach or you're doing what you do, I would suggest, especially at the beach, because salt water ain't good for no phone. I would suggest get a life proof case, get something that covers up the ports. But if you just happen to drop it in the toilet or you happen to drop it in the bathroom, in the sink, or you, you know, you're doing the dishes, you got it on the stand and you reach over and it falls in the pot, you're good money. All right, so the phone is still waterproof. I like that. Now, not 100% waterproof. You can't go 20,000 leagues under the sea, but it is water resistant enough for your day-to-day -day activities. Next, wireless charge. Now, I don't have to test wireless charge. Y'all seen the case videos. Wireless charge is just a nice thing to have on a phone. That's one of the things that I don't like about the P20 Pro that, that's really killing me about that phone. Y'all see I just got the leather back version. No wireless charge. Now, me, when I get to work, my phone goes just like this on a wireless charge. Got about four of them shits lined up side by side. I pull out all my phones that have wireless charge capability, wirelessly charge them. This way when I want to jet, I just grab them and keep it moving. When I get in the house, I plug them in. All right, so now having the option of either wireless charge or plug-in, that's a plus. All right, so I'm feeling that. Next, facial unlock. Now the face unlock on this, let me just, <laughs> let me just make sure, I just took a phone call, all right, here we go. Let's do the facial unlock. All right, facial unlock on this works 100% of the time. It's super secure and it's fluent. Now, if you want, you could turn attention off. I got attention off, but if you're doing scumbag tactics, I advise you to leave the attention on, so this way you really gotta look at it. Nobody can't just breeze your phone, even if you're sleeping, somebody can't just peel your eyelids real quick, swipe your phone, you really gotta look at it. 
So if somebody's really trying to get you like that, they're gonna have to work a little bit harder. But anyway, face unlock, super secure. You can use it to make payments and it just works. One of the things is too that I like about the iPhone face unlock that it actually learns your face. This is actually one of the only phones that I got that you can use face unlock. It knows my face now, so I can have on sunglasses. I can have on the, the fake Bob Marley beard and dreadlocks. I can have on my regular glasses. It doesn't matter. Even if I don't shave, this facial unlock just works 100% of the time. So it's gonna learn your face. All right, so I'm feeling that. Next, display. Now again, this is one of the only differences between the eight plus and the 10. LCD versus OLED. It's hard to really see on this video, but I like the OLED better. The colors look a little bit more vibrant. It's not night and day, it's night and afternoon. <laughs> All right. But you're gonna like this OLED display. Looks beautiful. Let's take it over to the gram real quick. Big, giant, almost edge-to-edge -edge display, minus the notch. It just looks beautiful though. All right, so no problems with the display. Next. Speakers, the speakers on this phone. Now let me pull up a YouTube video real quick. Let's see what we got on deck. All right, I pulled up one of my old Killer Instinct videos. Listen to the speakers on this phone and look at that beautiful display. You could feel the bass coming from the speakers, listen. You're gonna love watching videos and listening to music from this phone. Now check this out. All right, so next, let's talk about the camera. Now this is one of the things that I like the most, if not the most about this phone. I would say the camera and the speakers and the build quality and the display, but the camera gotta be in the top two. The camera on this phone is amazing. All right, so we'll open up the camera real quick. Now, I don't have to go through all of the modes. We did that in unboxing. I know somebody's gonna say, oh, there's no pro mode. This is one of those phones that you don't need pro mode. The camera is just so amazing. I'm gonna do a quick portrait mode. Watch this. Look how fast I just did that. Look at this photo. You see how the background is blurred out? That just looks incredible. Point and shoot status. Let's go to edit. Let's go to... Uh, Let's add some more blur in the background. Look at that. I can make the background super blurry if I want, or I can take it all the way away. And that's the newest feature about this. But honestly, I've never used that. Every portrait mode photo that I took so far has came out perfect. Now I wanna show y'all something real quick. Now this is the part of the video that I just go through all of my camera shots so you can see what I'm doing. All right, now this is just a video. Check this out. Listen to them speakers. This is me just being a douchebag driving around the hood, busting off shots. Why not? Let's do one more. Video quality. This is uh, 4K, 60 frames per second at nighttime, no flash. Looks beautiful. Let me get a wipe down on display so I don't get any glare. Now this is just a regular night photo. Look at the background though. Beautiful photos at night. This is what I was telling y'all about the G Wallet. Check this out. Walking around with all these SIM cards and micro SD cards. Y'all ain't ready for that. That's the Passport Wallet. This is the little the Street Fighter video I posted the other day. Now check this out. This is what I'm saying. Now I was half drunk. I wanted to take a picture of some Malibu in portrait mode. This is amazing. For point and shoot status, with a shaky hand, this came out perfect. So you, you could adjust the blur if you want, but I haven't had the need to yet. Now I just wanted to showcase some of the vividry, the vividness, <laughs> vividry, some of the vividness of the colors. These are my favorite drinks anyway, these are Calypso joints. All of them are mixed with lemon. Love those. All right, this is another, another driving daytime footage now. Again, 1080p, 60 frames for this one, but you could do 4K. Beautiful. 
Shout out to my daughter. She bought me some keychains. She know what I like. I had another video. Check out this G-Wagon. Again, just point and shoot. Perfect pictures. Now, I seen this one. I was going to front on the gram, act like I just bought a new G-Wagon. But I can't do that since y'all watching this video. But I'll find another one. <laughs> More vividness with the colors. Check this out. Now, usually when I want to test uh, phone cameras, I just walk up and down in the store and check for shakiness. Let me turn the volume down real quick. I think they had some shit playing in the background. But check this out. Now, this is me walking around Family Dollar. All right, I'll be balling on the budget. Why not? Ain't no shame in my game. So I was getting ready to dip. Then I realized I got to get some food for the white shoes. So you're going to see me turn around. I, was, I seen the pet food. I said, oh, shit. I forgot about the shoes. Yo. Can't forget about the shoes. Yo. All right, so I turned back around. And check this out. Now look at this video quality, though. Perfect. Little memes I'm getting ready to upload. Some leather seats, uh, seat covers. This guy right here. This cat be stalking me in the deli. Look how big this dude is. I was in the bed watching this cop show. Check this out. Now, this is one of the uh, iPhone the little stickers you could add. All right. Now, I got another portrait mode. Look, look at this portrait mode. Hashtag vape life. Y'all know what it is. Nighttime photo. That's the whip looking mad dirty. This is the deli that that cat be stalking me at. But a nighttime photo, it just looks beautiful. Now, these are just random photos. Whenever I'm testing the phone, I just keep taking pictures. And then this way, when I'm doing the review, I can sit down and just show you all the pictures. All right, now, this is another angle. I used the flash on this one. This dude again. <laughs> Yo, check out his face here. This cat done been through some shit, though, yeah. All right, that's why I respect him. Look, he, he done been through some wars, yo. He, he's surviving, yeah. This is another one walking around in the uh, bodega. Now, I'm not trying to hold the phone super steady. I'm just walking around. So this would be the same way if you were somewhere and you seen some drama popping off and you just pulled out your phone, this is how the video would look. If you was walking around and maybe somebody was following you or something and you wanted to just start recording, it's going to look like this. This quality is A1. Look at the colors. Nice and smooth. Nice stabilization. And y'all know I don't got the most <laughs> non-shaky hands in the world. Beautiful. Portrait mode. Check this out. Now, this is uh, chicken and vegetable. Look at the background. Portrait mode. Let's go. This is just more deli shots. And this is the uh, UE speakers I did the other night. And more driving videos. You get the idea. For a point and shoot style camera, you're going to love this. Like I, I would put this in the top five cameras. Between this, you got the uh, Google Pixel 2 XL. You got the Galaxy Note. You got the Mate RS and the P20 Pro. Same cameras. And then everything else. Those are my top four to five. But this is definitely in the top. And the best thing I like about this, now I know people say, oh, there's no pro mode. iPhones are more for simple. Let me just address that real quick before we keep it moving. Sometimes simple is good. Now, when, when if somebody asks me which one is more advanced, iPhone or Android, I'm going to say Android. And it, it doesn't mean advanced like you're smarter. It just means advanced like there's more stuff going on. Like the pinch, like even from the homepage right now, just pinch the zoom, change the widgets. You know, just it's a lot of stuff that you could do on your android it's more stuff so it, it makes it seem like it's more advanced i would say iphones are really a little bit more simple but simple in a good way you get used to these iphones you know a lot of times you don't need to make stuff harder than it is all right this is a nice simple phone and it gets the job done all right so the camera the, the, the whole point out of that little ramble just now was the camera is simple you don't got to go to pro mode you don't got to start changing the iso and the white balance you pull out your camera you see something you want to take a picture of, you put it in portrait mode, you wait to get that little light sign. Let me move back a little bit. Get that little light sign, hit the button, go to your recently uh, shot photos, and there's your portrait mode shot. Just like that, just that simple. Next, battery life. Now this is one of the things, I didn't put it on my, my dislike list, but the battery life on this is really nothing to write home about. It's nothing to make a big deal about. Now, it's hard to talk about battery because everybody uses their phone different. So for me, my phone, the brightness stays like this. 
All right. Now, real quick, shout out to my daughter. Her brightness stays like this. Now, her, her, her battery, she her battery, she charged. It, it lasts all day, all night. But her brightness is like this. So the other day, she's like, Dad, check out this picture. So she's going to pass me the phone. I got so mad at her. I don't know why. But I got so mad at her. I was like, yo, because we always go through this. I was like, do me a favor. Stop handing me your phone. Because she always want to show me something. Stop handing me your phone with the brightness like this. I, and then I'd be getting mad at her. Like, yo, why are you? Why do you have your brightness like this? You can't even see the phone. Like, why do you want an iPhone Max? And you can't even see it. You can't even enjoy the display. She'd be like, nah, because I don't want people looking over my shoulder and I want to save battery. I can understand that. But back to what I was saying about battery life, depending on how you use your phone is how much battery life you're going to get. So if you like me and you got your phone on max brightness, it's going to die a lot faster than somebody that has the phone brightness all the way on low. And it's the same thing if all day long. You watching videos, you streaming Bluetooth, you doing everything your battery's not gonna last that long. So in my usage, the way I use the phone, I use the phone heavy. I would say the battery life on this, this is a four to five hour phone for me. The Galaxy Note 9 would be a six to seven hour phone. Now, if I want to, I could adjust the settings and easily rock this from nine to five and then go out, have drinks after work and come home and have battery left. There's ways that you can save battery, but I don't like to use those. I just like to rock out heavy and when you're rocking out heavy, this battery, it just ain't, they ain't enough for me. Now, of course, I got to bring it back to the note, 4,000 milliamps. It really doesn't matter what 4,000 versus 3,700 versus 3,500. It all depends on the particular phone, the software, and how that phone optimizes the software. There's other phones, like my iPhone 10. It has a smaller battery, but it seems like it lasts longer than the 10s Max. Go figure. Now, of course, you got a bigger display, so it's eating up more power. But you, you get what I'm saying. But battery life on this, it's not bad. It's not, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say it's the greatest in the world, but it's not bad. It's going to get you through the whole day. Next, performance. Now, the performance on this phone is stellar. All right? <laughs> the performance on this is incredible. No lag, no hiccups. You see how fast you open and close apps. Let's go to uh, Amazon.com. There's your website, switching between apps, no problems. No lag, no hiccups. All right, so the performance on this, it's a major go. My only thing is, Apple, man, it's about that time. And this phone is big enough, why not have split-screen multitasking? I want to watch a YouTube video, and I want to be on Instagram at the same damn time. All right, other than that, though, the performance, incredible. Next. Gestures. Now, you don't have all the motions and gestures that you got on your uh, Galaxy phones, but you got a few. And I love these. Once you get the hang of this, like swiping back and forth. One thing I just noticed, too. Remember before you had to hold down, wait to get that little minus sign, and then swipe up? Now you can just swipe up fast. I like uh, opening up an app. Let's, uh, let's open up this. Then when you exit out, you kind of don't even want the home button anymore. Once you get used to those gestures, exit out just like that. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to them. It's a learning curve, just like anything else. Let's open up something else. Go to YouTube. Then I could go to YouTube, and I want to switch to Instagram. Let's take it over to Snapchat. Then I could just uh, go up, have all of them. My favorite part is swiping away, though. So you're not, you're not going to miss having that home button if you, get, if you upgrade from the 8 Plus. You just got to learn the gestures, and the gestures work fluently. Now, I had a few Android phones that you could switch between having the regular, you know, back and recently used app, or you could just have full screen and the gestures, and sometimes the gestures, they lag out a little bit. iPhone gestures never lag, no bugs, no hiccups. Let's keep it moving. Next, and emojis. Let me pull that up. Now, before, <laughs> before I was saying and emojis is trash, because you got to remember, they only had a few. They only, had, they only had a few and emojis, and remember that was one of my gripes. Like af after you send somebody the monkey, then you send somebody the cat, then you send somebody, you know, the, the shithead. After you send a, a three emojis after and emojis, after a while it's like, all right, you can't keep sending somebody the same one. But now what they did, check this out. Now you can make your own and emoji, or I would just say uh, human emoji. <laughs> You can make your own emoji, uh, your face emoji. Now, look, I'm looking at it. I'm going to close my eyes. Let me smile. Open my mouth. 
Watch the tongue. Uh, <laughs> now, that's the one my daughter, she's so tired of that. I keep sending her, like, at the end of all my messages, I just be like, uh, just so you can see that tongue. Let me do that again. If y'all can see, hold up. All right, can y'all see the head? All right, there it goes. What? What? Keep, keep a close eye on the face. Oh, see, I'm blocking the camera. All right, you see me moving my head side to side. Open and close the mouth as I'm actually talking. Uh, 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 so I'm blocking the camera, but you get the idea. Now you got way more. Now, this is one that I just made for myself. Kind of looks like me a little bit with the Kango, but you can make your own face. You also have the monkey. You got the robot, you got the cat, the dog, the alien, you got the fox, you got the shithead. Basically, this is the ice cream cone, but you know, <laughs> you got the pig, you got the panda, you got the rabbit, you got the chicken, you got the unicorn, you got the lion, the dragon is new, I like that. You got the skull, Let me let's let it catch. You see, you can make your messages. You got the bear, the tiger, the koala, you got a dinosaur, and you got the ghost. So now you got a bunch of different ones to choose from. So if you like using these, you don't have to keep using the same one every day. But me, I'm hooked on using this one, the one I made of myself. You could go to Ad though and make it and, and take a picture and make yourself. Uh, take take the stock template and make one of yourself. So the animojis on this is pretty dope. One of the best things I like about iPhone 2 is iMessage. Let's talk about that since we're here. So I want to send a message like, yo, you hit this, you got different screens. Now, if somebody else has an iPhone, this is how they're going to get that message. I can send yo, I right, somebody in my front yard. I can send yo, going to come up with the echo effect. We got the spotlight. So if I'm sending somebody a text message and they just got busted, boom, spotlight, busted. Or if you really want to know the answer. Then you got the balloons, happy birthday. When that person gets the message, this is what it's going to look like on their phone. And it's an actual sound and a vibration. My favorite one is the fireworks. This is a nice one. The congratulations, parties, whatever. If you want to get cutesy, you got the big heart. And it actually floats away. I like that. You got this one. This is like some laser beams. And it actually has a sound. It's like high-tech laser beams. This is my favorite one. When you send somebody a message with the fireworks... It'll look just like this. Like, they're going to get that message. Their phone is going to be the white background. It's going to turn black like this. You're going to see those fireworks, and their phone is going to be vibrating. It's just dope. All right, I use that one a lot. This is the shooting star. A little twinkle. And this is, like, another, like, explosion or something. That one is pretty dope. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Let's exit out of that. But you also have... Whole bunch of different stuff you could do. You could scribble. You got the iMessage games. Got all the gifts, everything. So basically, one of the things I love about iPhones is iMessage. Now, of course, if you let me let me show you something real quick. Let me see if I got anybody. Okay, like Max Lee. Let me put Max Lee on blast. Let me see. Alright. <laughs> now I can't even put Max Lee on blast. But anyway, you understand what I'm saying? You got the green bubbles and you got the blue bubbles. Alright, so if you got <laughs> the green bubbles, they're going to call you a peasant. If you got the blue bubbles, you in the game. If you don't know the difference, ask somebody that has an iPhone. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Next. All right, so that was, uh. let's talk about lag factor real quick. And it's going to be super quick because there's no lag. No lag on iPhones. I've never had an iPhone that lagged. All I've had is forced closes. That's those random resets I was talking about at the beginning. You might be checking out the gram. As soon as you go to hit a comment, the phone will go black. You get that little spinny wheel, and it pop back up. That ain't the biggest deal in the world. Like I said, it only happened twice since I had this phone. So on the lag factor uh, scale, I would say 1 being a super laggy Galaxy S3 and 10 being no lag at all on a scale of 1 to 10. This gets a 10. No lag. So that's, a, again, now we, we got to talk about that real quick. That's one of the things that steer people away from Android. If you got people that have been rocking iPhones heavy, Soon as they hear Android, the first thing that comes to their mind is lag. And you can't be mad at them for that, especially with Galaxy phones, because they was right. Up until the Galaxy S9 and the Note 9. These are the first two Galaxies that I had that I could truly say from day one, I haven't experienced any lag. So if that's your main excuse for not going from Android, I mean from Apple to Android, because you're worried about lag, 
Those lag days is over with Galaxies. I don't have any lag on my Huawei phones either. Well, let me let me let me let me not say that. Minimum lag. I would say on my Galaxies, my Google Pixel, my HTC, no lag. Alright, so you could get that out of your mind. We neck or neck right now with the no lag factors. Alright, so no lag on the iPhone XS Max. Last but not least, let's talk about the floss factor. Now I gotta grab some phones for the floss factor. Hold on, what we got on deck. Just in case you're new to my channel and you don't know what the floss factor is, that means you go somewhere, you got your iPhone XS Max, or you got your iPhone uh, XS, somebody pulls up, they got an LG G7, somebody got that Oppo Find X, somebody got the Huawei P20 Pro Leatherback Edition, somebody got the Vivo Next S, somebody got a Google Pixel 2 XL, somebody got a Mate RS, Somebody got an HTC U12 Plus. Basically, all of these phones, where do you fit in on the food chain? Are you on the top looking like a boss, or are you on the bottom looking like a peasant? Well, if you pull out your iPhone XS Max, you are definitely looking like a boss because everybody knows what you paid for this phone. And even if you didn't pay that, you might be financing it. Everybody knows what this phone is worth. All right, this is the most popular phone. It's probably going to be the most uh, most sold phone. It's going to do the best numbers. Probably, maybe not, but it's probably it's definitely the most trendy phone. All right, so you definitely sitting at the top of the food chain. Now, are you the most exclusive? No, because everybody got this phone. I was up in the airport. Everybody got the iPhone XS Max, and I mean everybody. You pull out something like this, uh, this Oppo Find X, nobody got this. All right, so you got that exclusivity -ness. You don't, you don't have that with the iPhone 10. Same thing with the Next S. Nobody got this. Mate RS. Nobody. And I mean, nobody. I've never been anywhere and seen somebody with a Mate RS. So that's why the floss factor on this one is a little bit higher. But all of these phones, even everything that you see on the table right here, everything is on the top of the food chain. Only thing about these iPhones is they're a dime a dozen. And what I mean by that is you can't go to the gym and not see somebody rocking an iPhone. You're never going to go to the airport and not see somebody rocking an iPhone. That's a good thing and a bad thing. I just now believe, I'm into tech, so I'll be looking at little things. I was watching these uh the Senate hearings the other day and just, you know, just out just being into tech, you notice things. I'm noticing everybody had on an Apple Watch. And then it's like you ever been watching something boring, so you find so something else to think about like, all right, I'm going to see how many people have a red tie on. Like, you know, you you ever been watching a show and it's like I'm going to just count how many people are wearing a hat? Like something boring like that. So I'm just gonna every time I notice somebody with an iPhone, I'm just gonna notice that. Uh, I notice an Apple Watch. I noticed everybody had an Apple Watch, so that means everybody in there had an iPhone because you know Apple Watches don't work on Androids. So this is the most trendy phone, but it's also the most popular phone. So you're not gonna get any exclusivityness out of that. Anyway, last but not least, I know I just said that. One more thing, accessories. Now, that's one of the best things about buying an iPhone. You're not going to have any problems finding the case. Now, even with the Galaxy Note 9, y'all see I got a bunch of case videos. I got double that amount with the iPhone XS Max. Every company, like take, take Spigen, for example, Gal, uh, G LG G7. They pretty much knew that this phone wasn't going to sell like that. So they came out with like, Five cases, call it a day. Galaxy Note 9, they pretty much came out with the whole lineup because they know Android, this is the king of Androids. But with the iPhone, they came out with the whole lineup and they even got exclusive ones that's only for Apple. Like, do y'all remember the retro cases? They coming out with the retro cases for the 10s Max. Basically, accessories, this is the accessory phone. So if you're into accessories, you're gonna like this phone. Now, everybody been asking me about the Apple Watch. I will be getting a Series 4. Now, this is Series 3. Last year, I had Series 2. Whenever I get Apple Watches, I always get the Nike Plus versions. And when I went to order it from day one, the Nike Plus version ships later than the actual 4. So that one's supposed to come, I think, October 10th, the 4th between the 10th. I don't know. But whenever that Apple Series, uh, Nike, <laughs> Apple Watch Series 4 Nike Plus version comes, I'll unbox that and show that on the channel. And on the side note, I got these AirPods too again. Now, this is my second pair of AirPods. I hate the way these look. I like the functionality. The only reason I bought these again, because I'm doing a video this week with the best wireless earbuds. So I got these. I got the Samsung, the Icons. I got the Jaybirds. 
I got the Soul Electronics, and I got the Bose Sound Sports. So we're gonna do a video this week with the best wireless earbuds. Once I do that video, I'm giving these away. All right, so on my next stream, anybody that's anybody that got enough balls to walk around with these AirPods on, hit me up, <laughs> I'll give them away. Anyway, this is my full review for the iPhone 10s and the 10s Max. Basically, like I said, you can't go wrong with this phone, you're gonna love it. If there's anything that I missed, hit me up in the comments. Y'all know that's where I live at, and I'll respond to everybody that, that I can. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing, I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me vote. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Energize. So everything that I don't like about this one, I don't like about this one. And everything that I like about this one, I like about this one. Shout out to White Shoes back in the building. Uh, you kind of scared me just now, but I played it off.